So, Ubuntu 2010 was released into beta. Let's boot into this and take a look, shall we? Hopefully it's not going to take too long. I did classify this as an NVMe. Uh -huh, going to just cancel that. Uh, I think it already had this new boot animation. I don't really know. I do also have another version of this, the, um, the UK UI version, so that's a desktop environment. We're going to be taking a look at the installer real quick to see if anything's different. And if not, then, well, we'll move on to the desktop because there are a couple of new things on the desktop itself. And before we do anything, we're going to hit try Ubuntu for the main reason, because I want to change the desktop resolution. Simple as that. Do, 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 do. Do, do. All right, so let's try this. Wow, there seems to be a lot of bugs going on in these distros lately. Where they can't even go up to the proper resolution of your desktop. Settings and maximize that. Good, that's done. And we're going to run the installer from the live environment. And I'm getting really tired of that noise. I'm going to mute it for you guys. So, here we go. Continue. Yep, same thing as before. We're going to go with a minimal installation because I don't like bloat inside of my desktop environment or install, whatever you want to call it. And that just totally bugged out. Thanks for that. I just, all right, it clicked in. Yes, thank you. Um, advanced features. So again, you could erase disk and use ZFS. So we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to install now. Continue. All right, well, let's continue. Literally, because we have to hit the continue button. Yay. So this has remained the same. But I did notice something. This icon's changed. Not bad. Looks okay. This is going to install. It's on an NVMe, so it shouldn't take very long. Still slower than installing Arch using ArchFi, though. Well, I guess we could go over a few things while we wait. As you can see, we are running GNOME 3.38. And yes, don't worry. Most of your extensions will probably still work. We're going to find that out after we install. I believe there was a theme change with Yara as well. Uh, yeah, this looks a little bit cleaner. The Yara icons and everything else look a little bit cleaner. Let's go to appearance. Switch to dark. Uh, put this at the bottom, and icon size reduced to at least that much. No, actually that much is probably a lot more sane. Well, it's GNOME 38, that's all you need to know. GNOME 40 should be coming around the corner very soon, which would be nice. And so we're finished, the installation. So let's just hit restart now, and then we can go and talk about what's new. I'm going to just open up a page in here. Okay, so hit enter. And you should be good to go as it will automatically boot up. We're going to talk about what's new in Groovy Gorilla even though running Rhino is so much better. Uh, I'm going to be running, I'm going to be going over running Rhino here in another video. It's a rolling version of Ubuntu, which means it's not garbage. All right, so we're in. We're still 1080p. Next, 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 done. Great. So yeah, here we are. This, so this is, you know, the next major version, and yes, it is a major version of the OS. And uh, as I already mentioned, it features GNOME uh, 3.38, which has a, a huge variety of things. As you can probably tell, this desktop background is sharper. That was also an inclusion in there as well. So if we go here, you know, everything looks very crisp and very clean. Before uh, 3.38, the backgrounds were blurred a little bit. The full detail was never really shown, and that's been changed. So uh, scale-aware sizing of applications has been 
pretty much done and dealt with. Um, hard to really show that. You are also able to use mobile hotspots using, what do you call it, uh, that little thing. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but you can do that, I guess. You have a fingerprint login, which is great now. A silent change is support for OEM kernels. So, yay to that. Uh, Actum, active Directory, so AD integration. This is more of an enterprise feature, but that's still pretty cool. High precision touchpad scrolling in, oh, look at that, that icon turns, I forgot about that. In Firefox, I dislike Firefox completely, but at least it's getting some features that other, you know, browsers have had literally forever. And it's got the 5.8 kernel, which is pretty cool. I'm not going to be testing this on bare metal for, well, I don't feel like it belongs on my hard drive at all, but I figure I'll show you the kernel. There it is, 5.8.0, uh, 20 generic. Now you can easily go and replace this kernel with something a little bit more up to date uh, using the Xanmod kernel. I think it's Xanmod. Is it Xanmod? Did I remember correctly? Yes, right there, the Xanmod kernel. I always recommend using this. It gives you overall better performance, better microcodes, things like that, and you get the newest kernels and stuff like that. So uh, that's always good. So latest edge features are here. This is it. This is the one that's also in Arch. There's an on official port for Arch. That's awesome. So all you really do is you go in here, you add this key, just like that, into your password. It adds the key, and then you just take this command, and you hit paste, and it will automatically grab all your updates and install everything that you need to install. I couldn't get more simplistic than that. Kernel is pretty big. It's got some dependencies and so on. But if you want better performance out of Umatsu, this is just this is the way to get it without using Pop OS. But you can also do this on Pop OS and get even better performance there, which honestly I don't mind. So overall, right now in the state that this is in, I've been testing this daily since Groovy Gorilla was just a baby. And I can honestly tell you that when it's in the rolling release stages of development, it's stable, it's nice, it's actually very, very well done. But when it gets near finished product and they start locking things down and they start, you know, no longer updating packages, I find that Ubuntu in general just becomes buggy and unusable it, it, for my purposes, of course, but for yours, you know, who knows, that might change. But for me, it's buggy and not usable near the end of its development cycle. They just ruin it, honestly, by stopping updating packages and things like that. Um, what is this? Fix missing? What was missing? Uh, there must be a connection timeout issue. Again, it happens sometimes. Just run it until it works. But... Um, this is my opinion on this, right? I've had actual hands-on experience with the last distro, 204, 2004, when it was in rolling release time, right? And they were constantly adding new stuff to it. It was so stable. It was so nice to use. Uh, it was pretty much bug-free. And then beta one hits and it all runs to shit. So that's why I like running Rhino better. And we will be going over that with this same VMware stall here soon. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I tried to keep it nice and short. There's not much new stuff in this release besides the, the better kernel, the newer message drivers, the access to newer NVIDIA drivers, uh, GNOME 3.38. Uh, there's one thing I do want to test, though, before we get going. I don't want to take too long about it, so I'm going to try to just hurry here real quick. We got to install this browser plugin, continued installation. We're going to hit add, got it. We start this, uh, and there it is. See, it's always this one thing. Uh, give me a second as I install this. Chrome, GNOME, Shell. Yep, and it's done. Great, so we should just be able to restart this, and it works. My first main test is ARC, okay? My second main test is dash to doc. 
All right. So we had a bunch of people saying this wasn't working. I'm just going to install this. It works. We're just going to go and install this. And it works. So clearly someone was smoking a little bit too much and didn't realize that they were wrong because you need to understand that Arch, Fedora, and many others get GNOME first. And then you have the update cycle for older distributions such as Ubuntu a couple weeks later. So the very fact that they think that something won't work on GNOME because GNOME's so new, right, is ridiculous. It's honestly worked before a week before release. They had everything prepped and ready to go. It was actually uh, very entertaining to see. So if we go over here to extensions, you'll see that we got dash to dock. There's an error right there, but we can click to bottom. Uh, we can also turn off panel mode to screen. We could turn down the icons in the dock to be a little bit better. We can go to behavior and launching. You can turn this off, turn that off, turn that off. Errands, shrink the dash, go to fixed. Bring that all the way down to that. Gives us a little bit of transparency, doesn't it? You can also force straight corners on force it. So it does work and it works pretty well. And it actually gives you a better overall look. And here's another thing for you GNOME people that, you know, want GNOME transparency on the panel up above. You can just click this, install this, and then with one click, boom, you have a better looking operating system overall. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it a bit informative. Not bad at all. Uh, they did smooth out a lot of issues from 20.04's release. And honestly, updates went pretty quick, so that's good. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video where we go over running Rhino. I think that's what it's called. I'm not sure. But it turns Ubuntu into a rolling release distro, which is exactly what Ubuntu needs as a secondary rolling release as long as they have their stable release, their long-term release, and their minor iterations. Bye, guys.